at this time, I'm going to call the Parish Union High School District board meeting to order at 3 o'clock p.m. I'm going to ask for a roll call to determine a quorum. Trustee Nellison? Here. Trustee Campos is on his way to be here in a few minutes, but Trustee Garcia? Present. Trustee Vallejo? Here. And myself, Trustee Stafford, here. We have established a quorum. We'll go now to item 3.1 which is invitation to address the Board of Trustees on closed session items only. No takers this evening. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bennett. At this time, do I have a motion to adjourn to closed session? Second. Second. Trustee Garcia, Trustee Nellison. You can vote electronically. Okay, we have four in favor with one absent. We are adjourning to closed session at 3 o'clock. Okay. okay, we're going to start with item 5.1. The regular board meeting of the Parish Union High School District is reconvening at 5.37 p.m. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Please uh, remain standing for the invocation. Um, yes, for today, I'd like us to take a moment of silence for all the people affected by still in the Ukraine um, a year and a half later and what's going on in Israel and the Gaza Strip. So if we can all have a moment of silence for that. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Trustee Nelson. We're now going to um, recess into the California Military Institute meeting. The board will recess the meeting and to conduct a regular board meeting of the California Military Institute Charter School. We are recessing the meeting at 5.39 p.m. Need the clock to tick. Oh, I thought I was in. Here. Oh, no. no. Wrong meeting. Clock has to tick to anyway. Okay, now we're uh, at this time, I'm going to call the California Military Institute regular board meeting to order at 5.40 p.m. I'm going to ask for a roll call to determine a quorum. Trustee Nellison? Here. Trustee Campos? Here. Trustee Garcia? Here. Trustee Vallejo? Here. And myself, Trustee Stafford, here. We have established a quorum. We'll now go to item 3.1 is revision, adoption, ordering of agenda for November 15th, 2023. Do I have a motion? So moved. Trustee Nellison. Second. Trustee Garcia. You can vote electronically now.
3.1 passes five in favor, favor zero opposed. We'll go now to um, 4.1 is student representatives of, to the Board of Trustees. Uh, that's me. I'd like to introduce a uh, student representative from CMI, Cadet Captain Liliana Garcia. teamwork, building activities, and at the end, um, they will be scored, and then there will be a winner at the end of the event. And we also had our pass and review ceremony and our change of command. So now I have relinquished my duties to Cadet Captain Ariana Breeze, and now I serve as a, as a, as a brigade military advisor. <clears throat> Associated student body and senior activities. ASB will be traveling to Liberty High School to learn new lead leadership skills to bring back to CMI tomorrow, November 14, 2023. Also on October 23rd, 2023, the seniors traveled to Knott's Berry Farm for a trip that, um, that the school did for us. And I went, I had a lot of fun with my friends. We were able to get on a lot of the roller coasters. And some upcoming events. We had our Veterans Day breakfast on November 9th, where cadets were able to bring in um, a veteran, so either a faculty member like a guardsman or Captain Sibley or a teacher who served or somebody in their family who served in the military to, you know, recognize them and have breakfast with them. And promotion boards started today, November 13th, and will also be going until Wednesday, November 15th. And thank you for your time. Thank you to the student representative. We'll go now to 4.2 is CMITA President Angela Barons, if she's here tonight. I don't see Angel out there this evening. Okay. We'll go to 4.3, CSAA President Rosa Galvin. Rosa's not here either. Okay. Rosa's not here. We'll go to 4.4 .4 is the principal's update. Good evening, President Stafford, uh, board member, Superintendent Bennett Cavern. It's a pleasure to be with you again here tonight. Uh, allow me to present some uh, great uh, information about uh, what's happening at California Mil Military Institute, the greatest military institute in the state of California. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just a brief update on enrollment. Last time I reported to you, we were at 1045. We moved up to 1047, and it's always great. <laughs> for us to see. We do have uh, waiting lists in a number of grades, and that's very exciting. We haven't had the opportunity to uh, build up those uh, waiting lists in the past, but they're definitely there now. So we're three, three students away from our maximum capacity, which is 1050. So this is really uh, something very, very positive for us. Our capture rate is very important to us. I reported to you that our attendance increased and has been this year. We're continuing to see those increases. Last year, we're at 90.99 at this point. We're at 95.47, which is very encouraging for us. Um, coffee with the principal. Um, I was, it was a wonderful time. We, we, parents were present. Uh, community members were there. Uh, coffee with the principal, I do it a little bit differently. Um, I, uh, it's not just me talking. That'd be boring to talk for 15 minutes or answer questions. Nobody wants that. What I do is I have uh, my counselors come, uh, athletic director is there, my uh, assistant principals are there, 
uh, because parents often have different questions of different groups, and so we're able to inform the parents about any topic they want to know about. That's very important to me, and uh, it, uh, it was a success yet again. And so I'm very grateful to our parents who showed up and, and all the volunteers who helped make it successful. Um, some of the responses from parents, I always want to get some feedback to see what we did well, what we can improve. That's very important to me, and based on the feedback from our parents, uh, we're doing very well, and our parents are very satisfied with what we're able to provide to them that evening. Um, how would you rate this meeting? We've got about 82% of parents uh, giving us a five, and then 100% uh, of our parents there who voted said that the meeting was very helpful. So that's always encouraging to see, um, because if our parents are well informed, they're able to be a better partner for us and help their kids at home. Um, annual Veterans Breakfast, this is an annual tradition for us. We invite our veterans. But what's really special about this event is our students get to invite uh, some of their family members who are veterans. And so, um, you know, you, you have a CMI cadet sitting there next to a grandpa, you know, who served, um, or an uncle, or a father, and then they stand up and they present that family member to the rest of the uh, rest of the room and so you, you see some really special moments uh, some of the cadets even teared up as as they were sharing how proud they are of, of their parents uh, serving and so we always want to recognize our veterans um, moving on um, I'm gonna brag a little bit about our RFEP rates um, we as, as you know uh, I was an English language learner I came here years ago but this is uh, something I'm, I'm particularly passionate about um, our English language learners uh, have to be uh, designated fluent um, to, to take on some of the A through G classes that get them ready for college. So uh, that uh, support class uh, sometimes can take, take the place of that A through G class that they need. So the sooner we get them reclassified, the better. Uh, that's, that's the bottom line. And so um, CMI has seen growth in this area. Uh, over the last five years, and now we're at 44.9% uh, reclassification rate. And that comes through teamwork, uh, working with our parents closely, our ELAC, educating the students and parents about the importance of being reclassified uh, sooner rather than later. And so I'm very, very uh, thankful to the team that has been working to make this happen. Um, and we celebrated uh, the students who got reclassified, and so the gym was uh, full of parents and students who were very proud and, and, and very happy to, to make this uh, milestone in their life. And finally, in conclusion, as I, as I often say, uh, successful schools depend on uh, excellent board, um, cabinet, um, students, parents, but also community partners. Uh, over the last 10 weeks, uh, we have ha partnered with uh, an amazing gentleman and his assistant and they're sitting right there behind me. I'd like to just give them a, a plaque of recognition. Mr. Uh, Pete Cervantes and Ms. Flores have been putting on a parent program at CMI. Uh, and it wasn't just open to CMI parents, it was open to other parents as well. Um, and our parents uh, were very, very appreciative of what Sir, Mr. Cervantes and Ms. Flores were able to provide to our parents. Essentially giving them the skills on how to be a better parent. Right? How to deal with those conflicts at home, how to help your uh, student uh, study, um, just, just uh, supporting them. And so I just wanted to uh, ask Mr. Cervantes, Ms. Flores, you just come up. <laughs> and I have Michelle, our amazing parent liaison here with us to, to do that. So thank you on behalf of uh, CMI for your service, sir, to our community and our school. And thank you as well. Some of the parents are here. Yeah. Mr. Cervantes has helped many parents throughout our district yes. beyond CMI for many years. And so maybe the families, um, he may not be able to tell you right now, have, he's got a binder about this thick of thank you notes and how he's profoundly changed their lives. So um, I'm really glad you're honoring him this evening. Yeah, would you like the board to come down? Yes, please. Oh, yes. That would be great. <laughs> Two, three. Yes. <laughs> 
you. That concludes my presentation for this evening. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. But could I ask your indulgence for less than two minutes? Absolutely. I'd like to share with you what makes the NFA and I do what we do. This is a letter from a parent, and I can't and won't divulge their name, but this is, this is, <sighs> good morning. The parent project has helped me grow as a person. It helped me to see the mistakes I made as a mother. Now I feel very happy <coughs> and have made the changes in my life that you have improved my relationship with my children, and now I can tell them I love them. In this class, I felt supported in all aspects. I understood that I was not alone in the process. That's the gist of the letter. The parent came not knowing anyone in the class, realized they are all fighting the same fight. We're all raising kids. But with that, oh, and thank you to the Sheriff's Department, because on Unit 5 and 6, they always loan me two officers that help with the drug and the gangs in the area and in educate the parents more than they were when they entered. So thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cervantes. Thank you for everything you do. Okay, we're going to go down to uh, 5.1, which is invitation to address the Board of Trustees on non-agendized items. Are there any public comments on non-agendized items? No, no comments for the CMI meeting. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bennett. We'll go now to 6.1, which is an action item, is the consent calendar. Do I have a motion? So moved. Trustee Garcia. Second. And a second. Oh, I'm sorry. OK. You can vote electronically. Six point one passes five in favor with zero opposed. We'll go now to written reports, 7.1, which is discipline for October 23, 2023, monthly suspension reports. The next item is an action item, 8.1 personnel, classified personnel action items. Do I have a motion? So moved. Trustee Second. Vallejo. And Trustee Garcia? Campos. Campos, oh, I'm sorry. I need to look up. And you can vote electronically. Eight point one passes five in favor with zero opposed. Eight point two is personnel. The California Military Institute Teachers Association is submitting the initial proposal to negotiate with the California Military Institute regarding Article uh, fifteen compensation and benefits. Do I have a motion? So moved. Trustee Nellison, Trustee Garcia. Okay, this has a public hearing attached to it. So the public hearing to receive comments regarding the initial proposal to negotiate from the California Military Institute Teachers Association is now open at 5.55 p.m. Are there any public comments? We have not received any public public comments on this topic this evening, Mr. Stafford. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bennett. We are going to wait for a tick of the clock, and if there's any comments from the audience. Okay. So at uh, 5.56 p.m., the hearing is now closed. That's you. That's you. 
Okay. There's a motion. Um, we're going to have to take a vote on this. Or oh, we did. We did already. Okay. Okay. We have a motion by Trustee Nellison and a second by Trustee Garcia uh, to accept the California Military Institute Teachers Association this proposal to negotiate with the California Military Institute. You can vote now electronically. Okay, six, 8.2 passes, five in favor, zero opposed. We'll go now to other items by the superintendent. I'm um, just one item for me. Um, last Wednesday, I was able to attend the pass and review over at CMI. The kids did a great job. You know, they have uh, Senator Richard Roth there to observe the troops and and then the, and the change of command ceremony that, that Ms. Garcia talked about. It was just great to see the kids, you know, little tiny fifth, fifth graders in those uniforms. It's really cool to see that. But they, they did a great job, and we're really proud of what they do over there. So thank you, Mr. Milosavovich, on what your efforts with your students. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bennett. We'll go now to 10.1, other items by the Board of Trustees. We'll start with Trustee Nellison. Thank you, Mr. President. I would just like to say uh, congratulations to the two uh, recipients right there of the award. Uh, uh, sounds like a great program. I'm glad. I'm glad that people, we have people who are willing to uh, step in there and do that type of thing because there is no manual for raising it, for bringing up a kid, and, and you kind of have to wing it, but it, it really helps to be able to get, to, to get that information and to realize, like you said, that we're not alone. Everybody, everybody's, uh, if you have kids you're, and you're a teacher or anything of that nature, you're, you're helping bring the kid up, so, so it's good to have, uh, to have help in that department. So um, other than that, I'm good for tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Nelson. We'll go to Trustee Campos. Yeah, well, I just, uh, Dr. Milo, I always, <laughs> Dr. Milo, because <laughs> I don't want to butcher it. You know what, thank you for, for what you're doing. You know, one, one of the things that, uh, that I stopped there was the attendance, and that's like a big topic. And so the fact that you guys are getting those numbers, and I think it's, it's the coffee with the principal, it's, the veterans breakfast and, and ultimately I think it's a credit to you guys. You guys are making a home to school connection and that's one of those things and I don't know, um, I know not every Hispanic family is like this but my parents never said I love you. It was just one of those things that, that just, you know, until I met my wife and she's not, but she said it on a regular basis. I remember the first time I told my parents, they were kind of like, like that was weird, you know what I mean? And, and they didn't repeat it, you know. I, I said I love you and they said te quiero and it was just like, Okay, but it took time, and, and then eventually my mom, you know, she said it, damn, it was, but it took years. So thank you for that. Um, that's pretty much, oh, the RFEP, um, very important. Um, the movement is great. I love that. Uh, I know many times um, when they're still in the RFEP classification, they're still funding for them, and, and what happens in many school districts is they stop the support, and, you know, obviously when they're IFEP, then we know they're kind of swimming and they're doing their thing. But just, you know, my concern always is make sure that those kids, because obviously everything that you guys have done to get them there and to test out worked, but continue to support them because obviously we're getting the funding for them. They need the supports because we need to make sure that when they do IFEP that they're, they've got wings and they're ready to fly. And so, so thank you for that. It's great to see the numbers. That, that's extremely important. But I always kind of, when I see it, there's always a caution because I've seen districts who don't then continue to support those kids. They're still getting the funding for them. They don't support them, and then those kids struggle, and it, it's difficult to get them back. So thank you for, for what you guys are doing and continue on the support. And, and thank you, parents, just for all that you do. Thank you, Trustee Campos. Trustee Garcia. I know we're all capitalizing off of each other's comments, but um, it's true. Milo, thank you for everything. Thank you for everything you do. Our parents. You know, uh, Mr. Campos touched basis on the I love you portion. That's so powerful, so powerful. If we could get more parents involved like you guys in all of our schools, that'd be amazing. And thank you for having such generous hearts. We appreciate you guys. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Trustee Garcia. Trustee Vallejo. Yeah, um, I also want to say what my board members have said as well. Um, Principal Milo, because I can't pronounce her full name, but I will soon. 
you uh, you have really great leadership, and it shows from all the employees every time I visit there. So really, thank you to all the staff, because when I visit, everyone makes me feel at home. You guys are all amazing, and I can see how the parents and students are really close to that school. And taking the extra initiative to do the principal or the coffee with the principal, that's, that, that's a big thing that um, you guys don't have to do, but you guys take the initiative to do it, and that's what I really appreciate about you guys because that's how you guys are always going to get parents to come and have your school to be a united community. Uh, all, also to the parents who won the awards, that's a very awesome thing to do. Uh, we do come from a Latino community, and parents are pretty prideful, and but that's from the generation that they come from, so it's really nice to see now that we're breaking that generational gap where now we can say I love you, or we, we can show affection. And it's really great to see that because there are kids, even like me, that's still wanting to have that. But it's amazing that you guys are becoming real leaders and taking the initiative to do it. And that's what I think that's amazing because not many people would be in your position to get that extra initiative to talk to parents however long it takes and to have those hard conversations. That's what I really appreciate you guys for because you guys really took like are stepping up. And you guys are really creating a movement. Like this is something that we've been longing for so long. And to see that it's happening in my community, that's amazing. So I thank you guys very much for that. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Vallejo. Um, Principal Milosevic, it's, uh, I just want to say a couple of things. I, I appreciate hearing from you all the time. And, and you, know, you email me every now and then. And I really appreciate that. Communication is good. Um, I didn't make the passing review, but that was a windy day, I think, wasn't it? Yeah, I wasn't able to make it that day, but I know you did well. I've been to other ones, but uh, your school, you guys are doing great, and um, I want to wish you all the success in the world. Um, we, we love hearing from you every every month, and um, keep keep up the great work. Thank you. Okay. So with that, we're going to move on to. Um, 11.1, .1, which is adjournment. It's a short meeting, the, reg the regular meeting of the California Military Institute for November 15, 2023. Do I have a motion? So moved. Trustee Nellison, Trustee Garcia. And we can vote electronically. Eleven point one. We have five in favor with zero opposed. The meeting is adjourned at six oh four p.m. So we're going to switch back over to the regular board meeting of the Parish Union High School District. Thank you so much. So we'll go now to reconvene the regular board meeting of the Paris Union High School District. Did we reconvene? Uh, did, I, did I do that already? Okay, well, we're reconvening at 6.05 p.m. Uh, do I have a motion? Oh, oh we're going, I'm sorry, we're going to reconvene. We'll reconvene at 6.05, and we're going now to 8.1, revision adoption ordering of agenda for November 15th, 2023. That I'll give you a motion for. Thank you, David. <laughs> okay. Second. Who, who was that? Uh, it was, was second? Okay. Okay. Okay, you can vote electronically.
Okay, 8.1 vote being taken is five in favor with zero opposed. We'll go now to 9.1, which is report out of closed session. We have one item to report out of closed session. By a vote of three in favor, one, one opposed, and one abstention, the Board of Trustees approved the notice of immediate suspension without pay recommendation for dismissal from employment within the district and the statement of charges for employee 263725, a certificated employee. And that concludes my closed session report. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bennett. 9.2 is the district update by the superintendent. Okay, now we have a, a couple of rave awards we're gonna give out this evening, so I'm gonna ask Mr. Skorpanich to, to get up and recognize those employees. Thank you, Mr. Bennett. This evening, it's a sincere pleasure to recognize four of our amazing teachers from Liberty High School. So I'd like to welcome up uh, Ms. Felicia Asbury, Mr. Devin Gray, Ms. Christine Chavez, and Mr. Josh Kitsaro, along with Principal Dr. Erica Tejeda. If you guys come on up. So we're gonna rave about we're gonna rave about them for. <laughs> so the reason that we want to rave about them is um, we may or may not know this, but there's a national teacher shortage that's happening right now, and there's also a local teacher shortage. And so at the beginning of the year, we were fully staffed and ready to go, and we had a couple people at Liberty that. Um, moved and needed positions someplace else after the school year started and so we had a couple of vacancies and while we were hiring and recruiting for those other people and those people had to be released from whatever school district they were in which you know it's like the domino effect um, these four individuals stepped up and helped out to ensure that the students of Liberty High School continue to receive top quality uh, educational services and top quality instruction so to begin with we had two science vacancies and we were waiting for the release Miss Asbury and Mr. Gray who couldn't be with us this evening were uh, created lesson plans, assisted with grading, planned student class activities that were engaging, and supported the guest teachers while we were waiting for the other classroom teachers to arrive. Um, as the new teachers transitioned in their class, both Ms. Asbury and Mr. Gray were integral part in that process of integration. That was just a huge thing, so thank you very much for that. Similarly, over in our CTE program, Ms. Christine Chavez, uh, our Medical Pathways Lead, and Mr. Josh Kutcher, our, in, uh, our Engineering Innovation and Design Pathways Lead, also created lesson plans, communicated with parents, worked with substitute teachers, taught in classes where vacancies existed and then they've also been integral in uh, that transition plan as well so um, just helping the success of that hearth pathway so for those reasons we just rave about such amazing employees thank you guys so if we if we could we would like the board to come on down and we'd like you guys to come here and we're going to take a picture of you and shout out in public about it So I'll, I'll continue with my report for this evening. Um, October 19th, the district participated in the Great American Shakeout, so the, that, that went well here at the DO. We had some donuts outside and when we evacuated the building, and only a couple uh, casualties along the way. October 23rd, AXA Region 19, AXA is the Association of California School Administrators. We had a Region 19, which is all Riverside County. We had a president's reception, and Kirk's the president this year of Region 19 for the county, so he, he got, to run the show, so. 
we, our district kind of owns that, the, 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 the county region 19, because next year, Eric is the president next year. I think it was like three years ago that I was the president. Um, on October 30th, board member Compost and I attended the county committee on school organization. That was a good meeting out there in San Bernardino, so thank you for going out there with me, Steve. Um, number, November 2nd through the 4th, we attended, a bunch of us attended the Access State Conference in Sacramento. At the Friday evening award celebration dinner, Dr. Erica Tejeda received the Principal of the Year Award that she had earned last year, so congratulations, Erica. <laughs> November 6th, we participated in the RACSM, which is our charter access thing. It's for, there's 11 districts in it. It's called Western Riverside County Association of School Managers. We participated in the bowling and membership drive out at Hemet Lanes. And once again, PUHSD dominated and had the high score for the tournament. So it's like four out of the five years it's gone on. You can clap for that one too, though. <laughs> Um, November 9th, we had our second student uh, superintendent listening session with students from each of our schools. They came down and they, uh, Dr. McNair did a great job organizing it and, and Mr. Thomas and, and I can't remember Julie's last name. Harris. Harris did a great job running with the kids and they were looking at, starting looking at the novels that we're going to be talking about that to be, to, to be approved for use in class and they got a chance to go through a bunch of different activities and looking at, looking at different parts of it and it was just a really great day. And it's, you get to spend that day with those kids. It's just to me, it's amazing. And, and I keep saying it, but it's the thing it is, that's why we come to work every day, those kind of kids that come into the, that are, and they're not afraid to, to tell us when things aren't right. They're not shy at all. Even the Pinnacotti Middle School kids, they're, the first meeting they're at, they were a little standoffish, but now they're right in the middle of it, digging in. And so we have our next one, I think in March, March 7th. March 7th. Um, I think somebody had a birthday yesterday. <laughs> Yesterday was Mr. Stafford's birthday. I mean, I'm not going to make you guys sing. I'm not going to tell you how old he is either because we're the same age, so I know what's going on there. Yeah. <laughs> um, we do want to rep uh, recognize Mr. Stafford this evening, though, because this is his final meeting as the president for the Board of Trustees for this year. So Sarah has a plaque, so you want to come down here, Tony? We'll... We appreciate all your efforts to, to lead us through, some, especially some of the times we've had to deal with ugliness and And that will c conclude my report for this evening. Okay, thank you for waiting for the old guy, Mr. Bennett. <laughs> um, just to be clear, I, I still will be on the board. Um, election isn't until <laughs> next year, but uh, you'll have a new president from one of our board members. And we'll let that be a surprise. It's undetermined at this point. <laughs> so. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to uh, 9.3, student representatives to the Board of Trustees. We'll start with um, Trustee Nellison. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. President. From Heritage High School, we have student representatives Isabella Martin and Joshua Preciado. Good evening, members of the board, Mr. Bennett and members of the cabinet. My name is Bella Martin. And I'm Joshua Preciado. And we are excited to show you the events and activities that have been occurring here at Heritage High School. To start off the winter season, a few members of our boys basketball team put together a staff versus student basketball game. Our varsity team went up against Mr. Vick, Ms. Williams, Mr. Omer, Mr. Moreno, Mr. Brajas, Mr. McNair, and Coach Cheryl. The game started at 3 p.m. and both sides of the bleachers were full and loud. 
Mr. Vic towered over the whole basketball team, and Miss Williams with some impressive three pointers. However, the varsity team was too much for the teachers and took the victory. It was a super fun game to watch, and we look forward to more staff versus student games. Right after the staff versus student game, we had our winter legacy ceremony to kick off the season. We recognized our band, boys and girls basketball, boys and girls soccer, wrestling, and girls water polo. Families came out to support each theme through the ceremony and the carnival that was afterwards. Following the ceremony was a legacy march, combining our teams with robotics and dance. We marched through the halls, getting everyone fired up. ASB hosted the second annual Haunted House in the STEM building, and the theme was icons, taking the main characters from different movies and having them in our maze. Movies we utilized were Halloween, Saw, The Ring, Nightmare on Elm Street, and Chucky. It was an amazing turnout as almost 600 students went through the maze. We were able to use more special effects this time around thanks to the aid of media arts, which added more of a scary feeling when entering the maze. A big thank you to the staff that helped out and for all of our student scarers. Next year, we plan on opening the haunted house to the public during the fall festival. Our drama department held their first play of the year, Clue. It was a 90 minute show that was filled with amusement, laughter, and mystery. It was a huge success as both nights had almost every seat filled. A big shout out to Mr. Newman and the drama department for an outstanding show. Their next show will be in the Black Box Theater in January. Our November student of the month is Stephanie Girard. She is an amazing member of FFA and constantly doing projects around campus for AG. Thank you, Stephanie, for all that you do for Heritage. Here are a few of our upcoming events. Winter season starts today. FFA Green Hand Ceremony, November 15th. UC CSU Workshops, November 27th to November 30th. Girls Soccer Tournament, November 30th and December 2nd. Winter Rally, December 1st. Winter Dance, December 2nd. Link Crew, Coco and Cram, December 6th. This concludes our presentation. Thank you so much for the continued support of what we do at Heritage, and thank you for your time. You know what, really quick before I introduce uh, the, uh, Liberty, last night I went in Temecula, we don't have, they always do it live. And when I got here, it was kind of weird to see the videos, but I realized that's the way to go. So they finally did videos yesterday. They weren't nearly the quality that this is. So now, I mean, I, this is really like one of the highlights. So make sure principals that you guys get back and let your students know. I mean, for me, it's just like, wow. The, the quality is awesome, and so I'm glad we're kind of moving in that direction. But anyways, that's a side note. Um, I would like to introduce um, student representatives from Liberty High School, Moses uh, Madrigal and Morgan Tam. Good evening, members of the board, Mr. Bennett and the cabinet. I'm Morgan Tam. And I'm Moses Madrigal. And this is LHS's October through November recap. First up, Liberty continues with the Student of the Month program, November's nominee being Hayden Hendricks. Next, Liberty hosted their first blood drive on campus. All donations, time slots were filled. Liberty hosted their first community of event this year. Our fall festival included a free chunk of treat along with club brand booths with games, food, and activities which prompted tickets purchased upon entry. Each club received compensation for each ticket they turned in. Liberty celebrated Red Ribbon Week, where we educated students on the dangers of drug abuse and resources available. With the end of the 2023 football season, our school spirit reached high levels of participation. Our school spirit club, Heart of the Hurt, has learned new tactics and created new traditions for the school spirit on campus and will conti continue to implement them throughout the school year. Our fall city of accomplishments, football made it to round one, volleyball made it to semifinals onto state round two, water polo made it to quarterfinals, girls tennis were finalists, and cross country made the prelims. Upcoming events are the Winter Bison Stampede, our Winter Spirit Week, and the Winter Concert. And as always, Go, go bison. bison! Okay, next I will introduce Paloma Valley High School student representatives, Addison Garcia and Cassandra Madigal. Parents School Board and Superintendent Mr. Bennett, I'm Cassie Madrigal, one of two of this year's ASB Secretaries. And I'm Addison Garcia, one of this year's Junior Representatives. Congratulations to our football, boys water polo, girls volleyball, cross country, girls golf, and girls tennis teams for a great season. We had a few league champions and a CIF competitions to wrap up a fantastic fall sports season. With the fall sports season coming to a close, it's time for our coolest time of the year, winter sports season. Good luck to our boys and girls basketball, boys and girls soccer, Boys and Girls Wrestling, Girls Water Polo, and Competition Cheer. 
October 24th, our theater team went out and placed first in publicity and marketing as well as fifth in lighting. And congrats to our November Student of the Month, Archero Romero. October 29th, our NJROTC hosted the first competition of the year here at Paloma. With outstanding support from all the cadets, they were able to run a smooth competition, resulting in an excellent amount of feedback. November 3rd, many of our freshmen, sophomores, and juniors got the opportunity to attend leadership retreat with a new project. Not only were students able to dig a little deeper into a vast array of team building exercises, but they also met some of their fellow leaders in their community. We can't wait to see what Anu has in store for spring. On November 3rd, we also hosted our Muffins with Military event, where students had 15 minutes to ask veterans any questions about life, their experience, and any advice they may have. Our veterans had the chance to share words of wisdom and encouragement to our Wildcats. With performances by our ASL, Battlecats, and NJRTC Color Guard, we can't wait to see how this event will continue to grow in the up and coming years. Some of our upcoming events include our Winter Pep Rally, as well as our second annual Wildcat Winter Wonderland on Friday, December 1st. Everyone in the community is invited. That's all for this month. We'll see you next time. Bye! Bye. Trustee Garcia for Paris High School student representatives. Yes, I'd like to introduce Simone Smith and Monica Valdivia. Hi, my name is Simone Smith. I'm a senior that goes to Paris High School. I'm Monica and I'm also a senior that, that's currently attending Paris High School. So starting off, we had um, our senior photo pop-ups on the 24th and the 25th. So on those days, we had cherished memories come and take our senior photos that we would have in the yearbook. We also had a senior interviews October 24th to 25th, where seniors had the opportunity to get firsthand experiences and um, being interviewed to build up the resumes. Our community also helped out people from the sheriff's department and also people who run their own businesses from the our community of Paris were able to recruit seniors as well. Um, and uh, on October 27th, we had our mental health fair. So on that day, we, during both lunches, we had um, different booths and activities for our students to interact with, to bring awareness to mental health that usually most teens have. As well, going through October 30th, we had a bullying prevention campaign with um, Love for Life Association, which just brings awareness as well with mental health, but what the um, effects are um, and the causes of bullying that can happen through teens. So, and also our cross country team here at Paris High School, um, had the opportunity to make it to CIS. The boys made it to first and the girls got second. congratulate our student of the month Jayla Coulter who we're really um, proud of her and we cannot wait to see her future accomplishments. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> okay, Trustee Vallejo will introduce Pinacati School, <laughs> Pinacati Middle School representatives, student representatives. Yes, I would like to introduce Isabella Dorte and Diani Mayfield. Good evening, Mr. Bennett and members of the cabinet. My name is Diani Mayfield and I'm your ASB rep. My name is Isabella Duarte and I'm your ASB rep. The month of October flew by. We started Pina Cotta Puma Pals Paul's a group of ASB students that work with Ms. B students with disabilities to create a more inclusive ASB. For the month of October, we had an amazing turnout of students wearing costumes for Halloween and an amazing turnout of students presenting their shoebox altars in the library. 
Today for lunch, we are making thank you cards for our veterans. Thank you for watching and stay tuned. Okay, I think that's the end. <laughs> so we're down to trustee, uh, myself, <laughs> uh, Paris Lake High School student representatives, Ariana Najira. Nahira. Let's start that over if we can. My name is Ariana and I go to Paris Lake High School and here are some clips of activities that we do at Paris Lake High School.
clips and I hope to see you at our next event. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So we'll move on now to item 9.4, PSCA President Jason Miller. Um, we just got off Veterans Day. I would like to thank all the military past and present, and of course, law enforcement who keeps us safe. Uh, I would be remiss if I did not mention that yesterday, on your birthday, I celebrated our 20th year wedding anniversary. Yes. Thank you. To my beautiful wife, two kids, beautiful kids, two dogs. If you like velociraptors, then. Uh, what's that? The cats are no longer with us. Yeah. No, you can't. <laughs> We have four professional, uh, professional development days per year. I wanted to highlight some of the things that were effective at our PD days this year, and also help you understand educators' perspectives concerning PD days in general. We stand by the idea, PSEA stands by the idea that employees need to be present on those days to foster collaboration and reflection on the teaching profession. Two of those four PD days are in August, right before school, while the other two usually are sometime in October. Teachers feel that the August PD days should be committed as much as possible to educators getting ready in the classroom for the first day and first week of school. Getting their classrooms ready, setting up seating charts, setting up their grade books, amongst many other teaching tasks for the first day and week of school that will be about to happen. Having a successful first day and week of school will set the tone for both the teacher in the classroom and the campus itself for the school year. That first week, that first day is incredibly important for everybody. The PD days in October is where the educators can get a different set of trainings, a different set of eyes on professional practice. Teachers want trainings that are useful that can be taken back to the classroom and used concretely with their classes. One particular training did a great job of having rotational presentations on student attendance, fentanyl, and alternative to suspension. These are the kinds of concrete trainings that teachers appreciate and like to take back to the classroom. The cabinet worked very hard to put together these trainings and we're very grateful that they're uh, open to listening to feedback for the professional development days in the future. Thank you for this time to speak. Okay, thank you, Jason. We'll go now to 9.5, CSEA President Nathaniel Nash. Good evening, President Stafford, members of the board, and Mr. Bennett. Uh, first, I'd just like to say, uh, Sorry for my absence the last couple meetings. I had to take care of some personal health uh, stuff related to work injury. Um, but I'm here just to give you a pro and provide you with a quick update on our ongoing efforts to foster a collaborative and positive working relationship between our dedicated members and the district. Over the past few weeks, we have uh, diligently worked with our interim labor rep, uh, Claudia Jimenez, and engaged in uh, constructive uh, discussions with the district and uh, did a great transition um, while losing Lisa. Uh, CSEA is committed to uh, promoting an atmosphere of collaboration, understanding, and mutual respect. We believe that by working together, we can create an environment that not only supports our members, but also enhances the overall educational experiences of our students that we support. I know we have shared, we have a shared commitment to the well-being of, of these educators and the success of our students in our community. We recognize these challenges um, we recognize challenges each day that are ahead of us, uh, but we are optimistic that through open and transparent communications, we can reach a stronger relationship and agreements that are fair, equitable, and beneficial to all. I wanna express our appreciation to the board and the district cabinet for uh, their willingness to engage in conversations. Your commitment to fostering a positive working relationship is essential to the success of our, our members, our schools, and our students, 
Uh, we look forward to a productive and meaningful discussion to further a positive relationship district-wide, as well as, as we go into negotiations. In conclusion, CCA is dedicated to advocating uh, for the rights and well-being of our members, and we are excited about the opportunities that lie ahead. We believe that by working collaboratively, we can create positive outcomes that will have a lasting impact on our educational community that we all serve. Thanks for your time. Okay, thank you, Nathaniel. We'll go down to 9.6 comments by the Board of Trustees, starting with Trustee Nellison. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say thank you for your words, Mr. Miller and Mr. Nash, coming up here, uh, letting us know what's going on with your with your uh, your groups. Um, Mr. Miller, I, I'm glad to hear that our, that those trainings are are beneficial because I think we've all been in trainings where we felt that it was kind of a waste of time, and I'm glad that that's not happening at the at those trainings that the, that you were talking about in October. So um, uh, that's always good to hear. I uh, wanted to say I. Uh, the teachers and the uh, st staff members that got the rave awards, um, I'd like to thank them because uh, I know they were they were having a few issues with with filling uh, stuff and uh, filling positions over at Liberty. My daughters, both of them, were affected directly, with, uh, and they were in those. Some of those were their teachers in in those classes. One in a science class, and another one in their medical pathway class, and uh, and. It, it keeps them from from having downtime. It, keep, it keeps them on cha on task and allows them to continue going. And I I appreciate the extra effort that they uh, that they put in for that. Um, I did go, get a chance to go to a few uh, few CIF games. Went to Paloma Valley's volleyball game. I might have been bad luck because because uh, unfortunately they wound up losing in five sets. But it was a really nice, really tough game and uh, and they they played very well. Um, I also saw Liberty's. Volleyball game at home, and they won. So I guess I'm not bad luck there. But uh, I did see that there. I, I got a chance to see their football games, last game of the season, football team's last game of the season for the league championship. And they, the girl, the kids didn't put it up there, but that was their first league championship in football ever. So that's that's always good, and it was a really really well fought game. Um, and then. They they came out a little flat the next the next week against San Jacinto, but and lost in CIF. But still, the kids were really playing hard, and uh, it was good to see how well they played together, and finished up uh, nine and one in the regular season. Yeah, so so they did pretty well there. Um, I wanted to see Paloma Valley's game, but uh, they were away the first week, and they wound up losing. So I never got a chance to see them see that, uh, one of their CIF games. But hopefully next year. Um, I think that's pretty much it. I, I hope everybody has a nice, uh, I know we're going into Thanksgiving season coming up, and I hope everybody has a nice uh, week off and and gets the, the rest they need and uh, spends the time with family and friends and, and has a lot of food. So thank you. Okay, thank you, Trustee Nelson. Next up, Trustee Campos. Yeah, number one, uh, I'll kick off. Uh, Dr. Tata, please thank those teachers uh, for what they do. Um, you know, it's a testament to your leadership that, you know, when, when there's an issue, the team comes together and they make sure that it's, that it gets done obviously for the sake of the students. So that's awesome. And I know you're awesome. But when I was at the RCOE thing with uh, Mr. Bennett, um, it was interesting because I understood the award you won. And then when they mentioned it, it didn't really, it, it hit me that there was 5,000 administrators. And I was like, hey, Dr. Tater's cool, but man, she's really cool. <laughs> Holy cow, that's a lot of, that's a lot. So congratulations on that. Um, and that just kind of opened my eyes to a lot of different things that I did not know. Um, and one of the things that I know, Joe, you and I have to eventually have a conversation because the topic was AI, and that was interesting. I mean, I know I gave Grant an earful on the way home because um, my mind's spinning, you know, whenever that kind of stuff, it's kind of like the coolness of it, but the dangers of it. And so eventually I'm sure it's going to be on our table and we're going to figure out how to use that in, in the most appropriate way and beneficial way for, for all involved. Um, I did go to Pinnacotti's ELAC meeting. Um, that was so cool. They were doing all those little, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the Day of the Dead, the other was what this, um, I, I didn't celebrate that as a, as a kid, but when they made a presentation there, their library was like full of all these presentations. I mean, it was like super cool. I was just like blown away with the, the, the products, just everything that they did. Uh, there was great parent participation. Um, eventually, Diane, I know we're going to probably have a conversation because there's, you know, it, it's just you got to support 
the, what they're doing there. It's just there's, there's doing so many things, and I know that we're going through the new LCAP cycle, so eventually I took a ton of notes. Um, at the end of the day, I was, I was just impressed with uh, the administration there at Pinnacotti, the way that they handled that. Uh, the parent, again, the home, home to school connection is extremely important, and the way that they treated their parents there, it was great. Their parents had, uh, they were very proud of all their kids receiving the, the different awards that they were getting. So for me, it was a, a, a great evening. Um, I look forward to seeing more ELACs because the more I get involved in understanding it, it, it's kind of the best way for me to advocate for what I think we need to do and, and figure out um, what do the sites need at that particular level. Um, Jason, thank you so much for, for your honesty and your feedback. Um, I'm glad to hear that, that those PD, because I, trust me, I've been in PD days where I'm just like, <coughs> you know, my head's spinning. Being a PE guy, a lot of times it's, it's completely different for us. Um, but it seems like they're making things relevant, which is very important. And what I would like to see, you know, possibly, I don't know, budget-wise, um, you know, is I know that, that the newbies, they need that tech training. Those first two days, are, it, it's extremely important that they get the training that they need because, number one, they've got the curriculum. They've got all the different things that they have to take care of, the grade book, this, that, and the other, and then yeah. the technology. So hopefully, you know, in the future, we can figure out maybe some buyback days for those new teachers because it's a difficult job. And, and as we all know, this is... It's hard to find good teachers, and when we find them, we got to keep them. We got to make sure they're trained up, that they're ready to go. That way, when those kids enter the class, they're they're ready to roll. And so, uh, obviously, we'll have to figure out all that in the future. Uh, Nathaniel, uh, glad to see you back. Uh, I'm glad to see everything is going good. And just a thank you to to the staff. Just thank you guys for what you do. And I know it's not easy, um, and you guys are continuing to just raise the bar with and, and everything that I you know when I look at the video presentations. Thank the ASB staff because. That's really cool. I didn't realize how cool it was until I saw a comparison. And so they're doing a great job and thank those administrators and those ASB people there. That's pretty much it. Thank you. Oh, and I have a, I'm very thankful for everything that I have. So I hope you guys are thankful and celebrate this Thanksgiving with uh, a thankful heart. Thank you. Mr. Compos, I'd just like to add one, one you would ask about the newbies. We have two newbie days to start before they even come to the PD days where we work with them to set up their grade book, learn their way around campus, and meet with us, and so we, we do have two days that we work with them, and they're paid for to come in to do that. You're good. You work fast. <laughs> and they get a tour, they, and, and they get the uh, Bennett tour of the district. I take them on school bus. Yeah, yeah that's... Okay. Thank you, Trustee Campos. <laughs> Trustee Garcia. First, I'd like to say thank you to all of our veterans and law enforcement. Thank you very much. We appreciate everything you've done and are doing to this day. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Miller, congratulations on 20 years. That's a huge success. You know, that's longer than my record. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Happy belated birthday, Mr. Stafford. <laughs> He's not listening, Just but that's all right. Um, <laughs> I think ignoring that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, I don't want to be repetitive, but thank you guys for everything. You guys... You don't understand. Being a board member is very unique, and we get to hear all the awesome things that you guys get to do. And I want to extend that and say thank you because you're doing all the hard work, even though we get a lot of the credit. But thank you. Seriously, you guys are amazing and keep up the good work. And I hope you guys enjoy your holidays. Thank you, Trustee Garcia. Trustee Vallejo. Yeah, so I want to start off by saying um, Thank you, Mr. Miller and Mr. Nash. Uh, your reports are always very helpful and it really helps us to try to find better ways to improve or just to see what you guys have been up to. So thank you so much for your leadership because I know it's not easy and I really appreciate you both. Uh, I also want to say congratulations to the rave winners. That's pretty cool that you have teachers that are really committed to helping. And yes, it is your leadership that I'm just very um, grateful to see. I always mention that I'm so proud of you for, for also having the Principal of the Year, Dr. Tejeda, because I had you as my Spanish teacher in my sophomore year. So it's really awesome to see you grow too. And I am happy to learn from you as well. So thank you so much. Um, also, I... Uh, did the senior interviews for Paris High School at the end of last month. That was really cool. Uh, to go back to my, high, my old high school and do the senior interviews, because I remember doing it when I was in high school and I had to do it. 
So uh, all these students are very prepared. So thank you for all the staff and teachers for really preparing these students for the real for the real world because it, because interviews can be very scary. Uh, I still struggle with them, um, but it doesn't look like it. So. <laughs> uh, but doing those senior interviews also made me realize how how amazing that these children or like that these kids are doing from my time to now. Like they are much more they are much more prepared. They ask me really great questions where I really had to think about it. I'm just like, oh wow! Like I'm just very excited that we have a great group of kids who are our future, and we we are in really good hands. Uh, also, I like to mention a couple of the City of Paris events because we should always, I believe we should always be going to these events because we are a united community. And I do want to let you all know that um, the tree lighting ceremony is on December 1st at 6 p.m. It's a really great event. They're going to have like snow there. So you guys, it's worth it to go because I went last year. Uh, also, uh, the Christmas Parade is December 9th at 10 a.m. That's also a very fun event to go to, to see all the organizations come together and just really um, advocate and show what services that they offer. And also, Breakfast with Santa on December 16th at 9 a.m. Uh, that's also a really good one because they actually have really good breakfast. I'm a big breakfast person, so I think you guys should do that one too. Uh, also, lastly, I attended the Student of the Month, uh, and congratulations to all the students because they always have amazing stories to tell, and man, they always make me get very emotional because the struggles that they have and to see how they excel, it's so amazing. So really, thank you to all, to all, the, stu or to all the teachers and staff members and leaders here because you guys are really shaping the students who are going to be the who are really gonna be the adults now. So I really appreciate all the leadership that all of you guys encompass because I actually learned from you guys too. Like from all positions that you guys are all in, I learned so much from you all. And I think it's really amazing to see that we have created a really great district and we have excelled so much that even when I was there, which was a long time ago, guys, it was a long time ago. <laughs> But I really appreciate you guys all, and um, I hope you guys eat a lot because this is a chance for all of us to eat a lot and not get judged. So please eat a lot. <laughs> so please eat a lot and please relax. Guys, I'm saying it. Please relax. Enjoy your vacation days because that's something that I really advocate for. You guys really need to take those days because they are your own mental health days too, and I really want you guys to be relax and just feel better when you guys come back to work. So thank you guys so much. Okay. Thank you, Trustee Vallejo. Uh, myself, Trustee Stafford, well, I've been the president for the past year and it gets a little easier as you get toward the end of your term. It's, you, you know you know, you only got a couple of meetings left, but I've enjoyed every one. I, I, I think I've only missed one in my career that I can think of. Um, but. Um, a lot of reminders today, you know, you had the lightning and the sirens going and, and, and it just, it's a rainy night and you, you, you come out here to, the, you know, you come to the meetings, they, we know the faces, we see you and um, it, it's really a pleasure that, that you would take the time and, and really you're, shows you're really committed. Um, I'm a little bit older than Elizabeth, but um, back in 1983, I went on the fire department back east in New Jersey. <laughs> and I, so I did 20 years and then I came out here and did 10 years in the school district. That's why I know this district so well, because I, I worked here and, and um, I, I've always enjoyed this district. I've got another year to go and may run another term. Um, thinking it over, probably will. And I just want to thank the board for having me and, and working together and Mr. Bennett um, for being so accommodating and, and um, always being able to get things done. So uh, it's a pleasure to work with you and plan to be here. Okay. So let's move on. And we got some stuff to do yet. So 10.1 is the invitation to address the Board of Trustees on non agendized items. And there are pu some public comments uh, from Adam Cyan. 
Good evening, Mr. President, Superintendent Bennett, school board. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Uh, I'm a teacher at Heritage High School. I'm a union rep over there, but I'm actually here to talk to you about some of the goings on at a different site that I don't work at because I've been asked to by about a dozen of my brothers and sisters who, who work at a school where they have been displaced. Um, I'm not here to discredit anyone or to try to point fingers at anyone or, or cast blame or, or end this positive meeting with a downer, but I'm here to inform you that we still have a dozen teachers at Liberty High School who have been displaced, whose needs are not being met. And those teachers have, have exhausted all avenues. They've asked everybody that they can to intervene for them and to help them, and to this day, they're still being ignored. And what I'm talking about is you have about a dozen special education teachers who have been displaced. They're homeless, they don't have their own classroom. And we know why, we know why. The school's overcrowded, there's not enough classrooms, so somebody had to roam. Somebody had to bear the brunt of that, right? But um, I just want to give you some insight on what it's been like for them this year. When they arrived at school this year, they were told that all of their belongings would be moved into their new location, and they weren't. So while most of us were in our classrooms prepping and getting ready for the school year, those teachers were running around trying to find their possessions that they were told were going to be moved to their classroom next year, and they weren't moved. So instead of enjoying their prep time, like we just talked about, how teachers need that prep time at the beginning of the year, they were running around looking for their stuff. And their, their second challenge would have been after they found their stuff, trying to find a place to work. They weren't given keys. They were sent to multiple rooms and they weren't given keys. And for many days, they had to run around every class period of every day and find someone to open the door for them so they could do their job. And that's not a condition that any teacher in this district should have to work under. You had teachers that were, were assigned to teach on two stories but not given an elevator key. And they're running around every period trying to find someone to open that elevator for them. It shouldn't be like that. Some of those things have been remedied. Many weeks, if not months into the semester, some of those things were remedied. It is my opinion that, that it never should have been an issue. It should have been ready to go on day one. That's my opinion. So the struggles that some of them still face, they don't have a place to work during their prep period or their conference period, even though it is being said that there's room sharing going on. They're running around every day like it's a fresh start, trying to find somewhere to work. And then they get to a room and then, oh, well, you can't work here. We've already got this room. Go find somewhere else. There's a meeting in here that you didn't know about. Go find somewhere else. Come on, student, that I have to test because I have to do an IEP. We found a little room. Oh, we got to go move. Let me drag you around campus. That's what's happening over there right now. And it's not OK. They've done everything they can. It, uh, the fact that you haven't heard from a Liberty rep is the reason why I'm here because they had to reach out to other reps at other schools because they're desperate for their voice to be heard. And sure, there's only a dozen of them, but every single one of them counts. Every single one of them counts. If what has been said here is actually true, that we care about each other, we take care of each other, we do right by each other, if that's true, why are these teachers still facing that every single day? Why has there not been a plan developed where they know what space they can go to to work at every single day without having to run around and scramble, without having to waste their work minutes at work, causing them to bring even more work home than they already do? It's unacceptable, and I'm here to plea to you to intervene and make this problem go away and make sure that it gets fixed on their behalf. I'm of the opinion that they should come back to work Monday after vacation and have a clearly defined workplace for every period of the day where they know they can go and work uninterrupted and do their job. And if it can't get done by Monday, then I hope to God it's done by semester two, day one, because they deserve it as professionals. They deserve that respect. And now that we all know, and we're all here, from this moment on, if we don't do something to help those teachers, to show them that they really are valued and cared about and respected as professionals, then everything that was said up until this moment is just a facade. And I think that you would all agree with me. 
I know there's a lot of good things going on at Liberty High School. I'm not here to try to tell you that there's not. I'm just here to tell you, you have about a dozen teachers who are, they're at their wits end. They don't know what to do and they feel like no one is listening and all they want is a workspace. They weren't given their carts that they were promised on day one. And by the time they got carts, no offense, they've been given the cheapest, most ineffective, impractical thing that they could possibly get. And one teacher went and bought herself a cart because she needed it. And she still hasn't been reimbursed for the money she spent. And what's more insulting than that is that nobody even has the courage to just flat out tell her no. They just keep blowing her off, not responding to her. Not formally telling her, no, you're not going to get reimbursed. We're just going to ignore you. And then when the department chair for the special education tried to advocate for her employees, like her job description tells her she is supposed to, she was shamed for doing it. So I just want to bring that to your attention, and I want you to hear it from someone other than maybe the people in charge over there. Because this is a real problem. And that's 12 of my brothers and sisters that, that deserve better. And so I'm hoping, I'm hoping for real tangible action and results so that when they go back to work, they don't have to work under those conditions because it's horrible. And there's not a single person in this room who would want to work under those conditions, myself included. Thank you for allowing me to address the board. Thank you for all that you do, and have a good night. Thank you. Okay. Do we have any other speakers? Mr. Bennett. No other speakers this evening, Mr. Stafford. Okay. We're going to keep moving. Item, where am I at? 11.1 .1 is the consent calendar. Do I have a motion? So moved. Um, wait, let's, I think there's a presentation on this. That's an action item? Okay. Um, okay. I'll second I, Edward's I, I'm motion. Sorry. Who, Edward had the motion. I'll second. Motion, Edward. Trustee Nellison. Okay. Um, any questions, concerns about the consent calendar? Okay, you can vote electronically. Eleven point one passes five in favor, zero opposed. Next is a oral report, twelve point two. District wide professional development days. Mr. Tippy's gonna give that a presentation this evening. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, good evening, President Stafford. Happy birthday and honorable members of the board, um, Superintendent Bennett and District Cabinet. Um, I have the honor of sharing a brief report of our district professional development days that happened in October. So we'll go ahead and just jump right in. Uh, general information here, we had a little bit over 900 employees attend the two days of professional development. We had over 40 different workshops for all different um, groups. This year we focused on job alike specific PD, so professional development that was very <clears throat> focused on the specific jobs. And the overwhelming majority was led by district employees. We had our, our district uh, directors, coordinators, we had our social workers provide PD, some of our teachers, our EL teacher leads and coaches, and a lot of our classified staff as well. Um, these are some general sessions that every single employee in the district went through. We had an active shooter session from um, the deputy from the Riverside Sheriff's Office, and uh, that was actually the highest ranking um, on our feedback form session that for both classified and certificated. Um, I had the pleasure of sitting in there. Really, really great session. Uh, a lot of informational items and then also practical items too to keep us safe uh, in, the, in the workplace. And then we had a session with a new, so that was a team building activity. Um, our, our staff were able to do team building games and, and activities there. And then our own Dr. Cassandra McNair did a session on um, equity and for all employees as well. So those sessions, all employees participated in those. And then for our teacher schedules, 
In addition to those three sessions, all of our teachers went through a session um, focused on writing. Uh, you can see our, our academic coach, Mr. Thomas there, really acted out the part in a Superman shirt. Um, they did a, a, a superhero thing about uh, writing in the content area. So how do you teach writing in history, science, social studies, uh, even math? And then our integrated ELD, we had our EL teacher leads do training on the integrated ELD, or on the ELD standards. And then they also focused on <clears throat> really knowing every single student in their classroom their LPAC levels and differentiating instruction to meet the needs of the students at the different levels. And then we focused on our elevation as a platform that we use with instructional activities and strategies to focus on our, our EL students. And then our Aspire team, the counselors uh, from the Student Services Office, they provided training for all the teachers on A through G requirements and really getting our students ready for college and careers. And then we had um, Pupil Services 101. Uh, that was a se session that Jason mentioned earlier. Uh, they did um, rotations on fentanyl alternative to suspension and then the focus on attendance um, for all the teachers. And then Special Ed 101, they had the teachers um, specific training for special ed case carriers that was more uh, focused on writing IEPs and, and IEP compliance, and then two other classrooms for gen ed teachers, making sure that they understand the importance of the IEPs and how to implement those properly. Uh, we had a, a lot of job specific training, so I think this was a really good focus for all of our staff this year. It was a lot of fun. Um, the WAXI group came out, they were um, uh, provided training for our custodians on some of their equipment and how to really use those tools. Same thing with MNO. Uh, they had a bunch of really interesting things set up in the uh, throughout the quad, uh, focused on their their uh, machines and equipment. And then BackSafe was another safety training, really teaching our employees on how to um, bend properly and 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 keep themselves safe. Uh, we had uh, the Promethean IQ. Uh, this was led by our IT techs, and just really quick shout out to Mr. Williams and uh, James Heckman. Um, a lot of times when you run these trainings and everything goes really well, you don't know how good you have it until a disaster happens, and we didn't have any disasters, so it's really nice. Um, I was a former teacher, and it's really, really stressful. You get in front of a group of people, and the technology doesn't work, but these guys did a great job preparing everything ahead of time so that we didn't have any incidents um, at all. Um, so thank you guys, appreciate it. Um, they did a session on CPR, so that was really uh, interesting, fun, and then also obviously very important. Um, our own Beth Hayden, she's a, a secretary in our department, did a training on Google Sheets and doing advanced formulas, really, really helping our site staff be more efficient and save time to help support our students. Um, our SIS coordinator did a training on Infinite Campus, how to pull data out of IC, run ad hoc queries, and once again, help the sites support the students on a day-to-day -day basis. And then we had our social workers provide training on anxiety and trauma. The group you see in there are the, our paraeducators, so they're working side by side next to the students daily. So that was really, really helpful training for them to um, better understand anxiety, trauma, and support the students uh, in those, those ways. This is a, a partial list of the workshops that we provided to all staff. And then um, this is a summary of the staff feedback. One of the resonated, and there was a lot of, of comments and, and feedback that we're going through uh, prepping, prepping for next year. One of the highlights from the staff feedback on both certificated and classified were that they wanted to have a little bit more choice and be able to um, choose their own sessions to go to. So we'll, we'll work on figuring that out and incorporating the required trainings, um, special ed, Pupil services, integrated ELD, things like that with, with choice. And then um, a, lot of, a lot of people mentioned Thanksgiving going into to the, to the holiday season, but um, we're very, very fortunate to have talented people in the district and very hardworking people. Um, the only thing that stressed me out about tonight is that I forgot people to list here, but um, just a partial list of everyone that helped out and, and people worked really, really hard on this event, and it was definitely a, a team uh, effort. So. That was pretty much it, so thank you. I just want to say one thing. 
Uh, Mr. Tippy has done a great job. He's been doing this, what, 10 years now, Charles? A little bit, yeah, 10, yeah, 20, yeah, the, And he does basically the master schedule for this, master schedule for 900 employees to go to different things. And the time and effort he puts into it is, you know, I just want to say thank you and oh, appreciate you. what you do. Thank you. Thank you, Charles. Okay, we'll go now. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Campos, you had a question? PE specific. Uh, this this year, the PE teachers followed the schedule with all all of the teachers, um, integrated ELD, pupil services, and um, equity, and, and all those different trainings. And I think in 2018, we did PE specific, where we had a trainer from I think it was from San Diego County Office of Ed come out, and they worked on uh, the physical fitness test, um, those different components on that. But this year, they followed the same rotation as the. Other and we had the, we had a couple of those years with the COVID where we couldn't hold these trainings that we like we're able to do it again this year. Right, and my, my request would be to make sure that you get their feedback um, to see what may be because there is a lot of stuff going on. Absolutely. And I'm a firm believer in it. Like if you can Yes. This yeah. causes, causes a lot of improvement still. No, absolutely. Yep, absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Okay, any, any more questions, concerns? Okay, we're going to go to 12.2, district-wide programs and service update from Mrs. Shannon Cajon. Good evening. Thank you to the trustees, um, President Stafford. Happy birthday. Thank you, Superintendent Bennett and the Cabinet. Um, we're going to start this evening um, with an overview of what we're going to cover um, throughout the slide deck. Um, so we're looking at our college and career readiness um, results. Uh, and with me to present later on are part of our Aspire team. Um, Chris and Betty will be uh, helping to explain some of the college and career indicators and some of the, what they're doing with programs. So our goal that we'll be focusing on today is that all students will graduate from high school prepared for post-secondary and career options. Under goal two, um, these are the items that we're measuring in terms of um, being prepared. Graduation rates, our A through G completion, our AVID participation, FAFSA completion, our um, EAP, which is our early assessment program that's dependent on the CAS for the SBAC results for English and mathematics, our AP scores, the CTE course completers along with A through G, our CTE course completers in isolation, and then our college and career indicators. So the first piece of data that we're gonna focus on is the graduation rate. Um, you'll notice that there's been minimal changes over the past, past few years, and we've remained status quo over the last two years at 91.9%. Um, we believe that part of the reason that we've been able to maintain our graduation rates is because we have had the modified credits for students to graduate. This year, um, the graduating class of 2024 is the last graduating class that will um, have the reduced credit option. But um, going back to my presentation a few months, ago, one of the things that we did notice is that the uh, more and more students are able to graduate with the full 225 credits from the comprehensive sites. And the benefit behind that is that we are also seeing an increase in our A through G rates when they're able to complete their full credit requirement, which is ultimately where we want students to be. So going on then to our A through G completion. Um, you're going to get two different numbers tonight regarding A through G completion. I'm going to cover the district-wide A through G completion rate, and then um, our Aspire team is going to cover our A through G um, completion rate specific to our four, three comprehensive high schools since this year is the first graduating class for Liberty High School. So you'll notice that the A through G rates um, are higher um, now than they even were um, from before COVID. And that is because of the diligent efforts of our Aspire team working with our site counselors, working with our APs over counseling, working with our, our teachers to ensure that we're giving students every opportunity to become an A through G student, not just meeting those course requirements, but achieving a C or better in their classes, which is what they need to um, acquire in order to maintain their A through G um, class, um, standings. Uh, and you'll see that in almost every group, um, there is an increase. Um, we do recognize that there are some glaring decreases. And through the work and the collaboration with Dr. McNair um, 
in equity and inclusion, uh, those are pieces that we definitely will be focusing on so that all students have an opportunity to graduate um, A through G ready. Another piece that I'd like to highlight is a lot of times there's a misconception that A through G is just a college readiness tool, and it really isn't. A through G is also a measure of students being ready for the career force because the requirements that students have to be ready for freshman level classes is actually the same requirement that they have to be college or to be career ready. So the expectation that students would graduate, for example, with a 1300 Lexile. A 1300 Lexile is what they need to be successful in their freshman composition classes in college, but it's also what they need to be successful for most entry-level positions in the career world. The next component as we're looking at CASP results, and um, I'm going to point out that some of these are still uh, preliminary uh, results. They have not been finalized. We will not have that finalized data until December 14th, which is the estimated date. Sometimes there is a fluctuation. Uh, you'll notice that for English, we had a slight increase from last year um, uh, with a 38.88% of our students meeting or exceeding uh, the standard for English on the CASP. And then for math, um, it's fairly status quo. Uh, if you look at the numbers that are reported, um, they round up to 12% and we ended at 11.66 from 11.8. Um, we're in the same position uh, as many schools, not just in Riverside County or in the state of California, but across the nation, uh, students are struggling with mathematics. Um, the state of California um, is trying to identify remedies. I mean, we have a new uh, math framework that we're digging into to help guide. I know there's been some mixed reviews in the media with regards to that. Um, but we know it's a problem and it's something that we're diligently focusing on because we know that our students need to be successful in mathematics to be successful in other subjects. Um, one of the pieces I'd like to follow um, with terms of English um, and just overall our, 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 our success rates, um, I brought a team to the CMC, which is the California Mathematics Conference. And one of the great things about that conference is that it's not just a bunch of administrators or researchers that are up in the front of a room telling people how to teach. These are teachers um, that are in the field doing the work. They're instructional coaches, um, and they are coming from across the nation, and some actually from other countries, and they're sharing their best practices. They're sharing strategies that they've utilized in their own classrooms with students that are struggling, and so you kind of get this um, buffet of strategies and tools and practices to bring back directly to the classroom and, and try out with your own students. There's opportunities there to work with other teachers as well. Um, so it's something that I would like to make a regular um, conference for our math teachers an effort to, to give them an opportunity to have that professional development amongst like-minded um, teachers that are teaching the same content. Um, one of the things that they focus on is that in order to be successful in math, you need to be able to talk math, and we have to build up confidence in math. And so that goes back to the work of our instructional coaches. One of the things that they've been focusing on are AVID strategies, including reading and writing, and carrying those over across the curriculums, specifically in math, getting kids reading the textbooks, getting kids to be able to talk about math, and getting kids to be able to write about math. Um, for the county, um, Right now, our county results in English came in at 41.36% of students meeting or exceeding standard, and math is estimated at 27.10% meeting or exceeding standard. So you can see that math is a, a problem across the county. Um, our science scores, uh, we uh, actually have 16% of our students meeting or exceeding standards, which is down slightly from 2022 where we had 18%, but is an increase um, from 2019 when they last reported, which was 11%. So our students have that capability. Science is still a new test that they're trying to kind of gauge um, what it entails and getting practice in. Um, one of the best things, new pieces of news we got is that we now have um, an internal assessment block, or IEB is what we call them, which is a practice um, that teachers can use with students to prepare them for the SBAC when they take it so that they understand what they're, what they're doing. Um, and you've probably seen this if you have kids at home, they, they're tired with the testing. They're, they have a little bit of test exhaustion. Testing is like an, an, a sport. You have to build up endurance to make it through. And I know I've seen this even with my own children coming home. They're like, I can't do it. I'm like, yes, you can. Here's a Gatorade. You can do it. Um, uh, so 
uh, it's really when we get these practices in, kids know the tools when they get to the test and we see them improve. So um, the other piece I wanted to just focus on um, too is that coming out of COVID, we knew that our students were struggling social with social emotional and with behaviors. And I think our district has done an excellent job in terms of what we have with our MTSS program and our CARES program. But now I think that we have those pieces in place. This is a prime opportunity for us to refocus ourselves on the instructional components. And so one of the things that um, we've started is I've been meeting with administrative teams and identifying what are really essential components of instruction and how can we utilize those to provide a toolkit for teachers and have those collaborative conversations around supporting our students. Our teachers need to feel comfortable taking risk in the classroom and trying new things because we know what worked before isn't gonna work now. This is a different group of kids. They learn differently, they talk differently. I'd say um, their social emotional intelligence is way farther than where it ever was. They are aware of things that we just didn't see five years ago. And I think that there's a way that we can meet them and provide them with that academic support that they need. Um, the other piece that we're doing is we're looking at our courses of study and revising those so that they match up with our current standards and they um, have the contemporary um, components that are needed for students to be successful. This also provides an opportunity for our teachers to talk with each other and collaborate. And then um, we're starting those conversations about really looking at our data. Where, where do we need to focus on and making instructional decisions based off of that data? The next piece is looking at specifically the early assessment program. Like I said, this data is taken out of that SBAC. And so there's two um, pieces, there's two scores. Um, we have our college ready, um, and then we have those that have conditionally met. So our college ready students um, for this year out of English, we had 16.18%. College ready, we had 29.88% come in at being conditional. Um, in terms of math, uh, our college-ready students were, was 2.73%, and our conditional was 10.55%. So there's work to be done there. Um, I wanted to point out um, the cohort scores, though. So our graduating class of 2024 this year, they took their final SBAC last year's juniors. The last time they took their assessment excuse me, their assessment was in eighth grade. In English, this cohort scored 30% meeting or exceeding standard in English in eighth grade. Um, in 11th grade, they increased to 46%. So there, there's improvement within the cohort. Um, in terms of math, um, in eighth grade, 16% met or exceeded the standard. Um, in 11th grade, it did drop down to 13%. We expect there's always going to be a little bit of a natural decline as the mathematics courses get harder um, and, and some are a little bit removed. We're dealing with teenagers, test exhaustion, but there's room um, here for a lot of growth in terms of how they're performing. We have courses in place their senior year for those that have conditionally met if they have successfully complete a course like an ERWC or if they complete um, you know, an AP mathematics course that will move them from conditional to college ready. So I'm not so, has familiar, so familiar with what you know on terms of the EAP, but previously there used to be assessments that they would take to place them, and now they're looking at where they are in terms of their EAP results for placement because there aren't as not as many remediation courses available at the university level. Another neat fact is that students that come in at college ready on their EAP um, do qualify upon graduation from college with a bachelor's degree to become substitute teachers. Um, and so I know a lot of times they're like, I don't want to be a teacher, but even those that are going to grad school, they're not in school every day. It is a nice little carrot of you can come to work back where you went to school. Um, and you don't think that you'll need that, but I'll give you an example. My daughter took a, a gap year off. Um, she's becoming a teacher. And um, we went back to her high school and pulled her EAP results so she could expedite the substitute process and become a substitute and help to fill the substitute um, gap when we were coming out of COVID. So it is a really beneficial thing. 
Avid participation, we do see that there was a little bit of a slump there come, um, during COVID, but it is back on the rise. Um, last year, we had 1,976 students that were enrolled in our Avid courses. We know that students that are in Avid do tend to perform better, and they're getting those additional supports, um, having not having that support maybe in the home. Um, the la next one is our FAFSA completion. Uh, we are increasing, obviously, with it being a graduation requirement. So we had 80.14% of our students complete the FAFSA. Um, one um, piece to note, uh, this year there is a delay in opening up the FAFSA. Uh, the FAFSA will not open until December. Um, but they've extended the time to complete the FAFSA into um, April. And one of the reasons is that they're redesigning the platform to make it more user-friendly um, and accessible and keeping up with the times rather than saying mother and father. It says caregiver one and caregiver two. Um, understanding that we have a lot of blended families, there's an opportunity on the FAFSA to recognize that there's step-parents that might be contributing. So there's a lot of great things coming out. It's just getting it all going is a little bit challenging. Um, federal law does require, though, that that FAFSA is open by January 1 of 2024 for students to access. The next piece we'll look at is our advanced placement scores. Um, you'll, and there's two slides, there's a rationale slide that comes after this. So you'll notice that our AP enrollment has trickled down year by year. Um, last year we had 1,667 students enrolled in our AP classes. We maintain status quo with a slight increase at 38% um, for the advanced placement tests that are passed. And the reason you see the decrease in enrollment is right here. We have a surge in students that are enrolled in dual enrollment classes. And you can see that they have a very um, good pass rate. Um, so we've maintained the consistency of 90% of students enrolled in those dual enrollment classes are passing the class, which means that they're getting high school and college credit. They're taking college classes, they're saving money, and a lot of these students are able to go into the university and they're able to get done a little early. So there's a, a financial component to this. Um, in Paris Union High School, we offer 10 um, different courses that students can take dual enrollment through MSJC. We also have additional concurrent enrollment classes and articulated classes. And then um, we met um, Mr. Alfred and um, MSJC to expand some um, beginning um, MSJC college dual enrollment classes at Paris Lake for students to access because they are online. So things like guidance, which really just give them a taste <laughs> of the college experience. Because the one thing that we know is that our Paris Lake students are just as capable as any other student. And they can be very successful in college, sometimes more so than our comprehensives because they're used to a modified schedule. So I think this is a great opportunity to open up that door for um, our Paris Lake students. The next piece that you're going to see are our CTE course enrollments. And you can see, obviously, over time as we expand our courses, that we've increased the enrollment in those courses. And then um, in terms of the pass rate, you can see that we're about the 84 percentile in terms of passing those courses. We currently have 21 pathways that we offer in our district for students to to take and to complete. These are our CTE pathway completers. Um, this past year we had 2.10% uh, um, complete pathways and um, in 2023, or I'm sorry, we had a total, that was a total of 246 students. We did not have CalPads reporting on this until 2021. And there is a side note here because um, with all the pathways and with Liberty being a pathway school, I recognize that the number is a little lower than it probably should be. And part of the reason is that a lot of the schools, including us in our district, are learning how the CTE pathways work and the messaging between the counties and between the state. So when we report our CTE pathways, it pulls directly out of CalPads. So CalPads pulls from Infinite Campus, and then that's the number that we get. One of the things that we notice is that we have some errors in our coding. So one of the things that I've been doing with um, our SIS coordinator, Sandy Shamas, with uh, Ms. Martin, and we'll be meeting with sites, is going through and identifying all of our pathways and making sure that they're they're labeled correctly with the right name, it has to have the right name, and then going through and making sure that the CalPADS codes are matching up so that students are reporting their pathway completions accurately. So I. 
I have a theory that some of our, we have more students that are completers than are showing because of some of the coding issues that we've recognized. Um, but we are diligently working on those right now um, so that the, this year we will be able to make that correction and we should see an increase in those pathway completers. All right, with that, I'm going to turn it over to the Aspire team and they're going to go over some college readiness indicators and a little bit about what they've do, done to contribute to the increase in students being college and career ready. So you heard a lot about, and you've seen a lot of those data in our district, and it goes back to this, our dashboard, California dashboard, it came from um, the state of California. And one of the first in, uh, indicators we look at is the college readiness indicator, and there are five um, indicators on there. And if um, we go through the first one, it's, we look at the aspect scores. So uh, students would have to get a high school diploma in order for our students to be college ready, uh, they would have to get a high school diploma first, plus they either get, um, on the ASPAC score, they have to score a three or above on either English, the ELA, or the math. And then also, on top of that, a two in the other areas. So that's one indicator. The other indicator is um, passing their advanced placement exam, and they just need to pass uh, a score with a score of three or above on two or more exams. The third indicator is our A3G completion numbers. Um, so on top of getting the high school diploma, they completed their A3G courses uh, with a C or better in their A3G courses. Um, and then also on top of that, they have to satisfy one of the criteria there in yellow. Um, part of that is also um, that they got to complete a CTE pathways. The other one is um, earning, taking a semester of a college credit, a uh, college course, earning college credit um, with earning a C or better. And then the other also, is, keep in mind the indicator with the A through G, they must complete one of the other areas also. Um, so also the other side of that is also they have to also get a three or better on the ELA or the math on the, smart, uh, on the aspect test. Um, the other indicator is also the college um, credit courses. So if students complete, they complete two semesters uh, of a course and earns a C or better and a given college credit, um, that also shows that they met, that they're ready for college. And uh, most of that would probably under our dual enrollment courses would fall under that category. Uh, the, third, uh, the fifth indicator is basically our seal by literacy. Um, so our seal of biliteracy is basically they have to have a, a level three or higher in the ELA uh, on their aspect scores. And then also, if you look at all those five indicators, um, this shows that a student, if a student complete a high school diploma and basically satisfy one more of those criteria, it shows that they are ready for college upon graduation. So the other uh, part of that is our career readiness indicator. So the career readiness indicator has a lot more to that. Uh, the first indicator for our college, I mean, career readiness is basically uh, our leadership military science program. And with that, if the criteria is basically they complete two years of the um, military science program, and also, on top of that, they also have to, going back to the aspect scores, they have to have a three or above on their ELA or math tests. Okay. Um, the second indicator on there primarily is usually for our students on an IEP, and that's usually a, a transition class that they take, and, and on top of that, they have to complete 100 hours of, um, within the, uh, the internship then. The third indicator is our CTE pathways uh, completion. So if a student's uh, go through a CTE pathways and um, they also, if you look on there, they also have the aspect component to that. So not only do they have to complete a CTE pathway, they also have to pass the aspect test with a three or better on, uh, again, either ELA or math. And then also score a two in the other areas, a two or more. Um, 
also on top of that, under the CTE pathways, kind of like our A through G completion, there's more to that, is basically they have to have a grade of C or above, uh, complete a semester, and earn a C or above in their college course, and uh, that's in their academic, uh, that's given credit by the college. And then our fourth indicator is our state and federal programs, and that's usually our work and job programs. And the criteria for that is they have to uh, complete the, like, uh, they have to have a C or better, and they have to go through the job training program. Our last indicator is the pre-apprenticeship. And this is um, kind of new to us, actually, for I, I think ourselves and our team is basically that they have to complete, um, they, they designate it as these are schools that usually, uh, DOS is basically a school that's kind of like, I don't want to say exemption, but it's basically uh, debt. Yes, they're adult ed continuation schools. So these are another way our adult ed, our schools um, that are not, they're called dashboard alternative school uh, status. And basically, like um, Shannon says, is basically it's usually our adult ed continuation school. It's just another way for them to meet the um, career readiness. So and with that, it's, you got heard all about the college and career indicators. Um, this is the results, our, our college and career indicators from our school district last year. Um, it's actually, we have the 2018, 2019, and 2020 results. And on there, we have the prepare, approaching prepare, and not prepare. If you look at the prepare, um, we went up about 5%. And if looking at the notes, basically during COVID, there was no data for 2021, 22, uh, but yet coming out basically in 2020, we, had, we still had an increase of about 5%. Um, if you look at approaching prepare, uh, what that is is basically approaching prepare is when they start the beginning level of the class. Um, for example, if we're talking about a CTE pathway, maybe they started the pathway. So um, it's a little bit down, but however, at the end, when it uh, the number of prepare at the end, that shows that basically they completed the capstone qu course, okay? Um, down there at the bottom, the preliminary results for 2023, it does indicate is 33.2 for all students were prepared for college and career. And again, that is preliminary. So hearing all those, um, you've seen all those indicators for college and career. One of the indicators, if you remember, are A through G. Our district is uh, going really strong on A through G. And so with that comes our Aspire. And um, we're funded by our uh, a grant. And it is um, a grant that's written by our directors in the school district. And so this, this is us three um, district counselors coming together. And we came up with the program Aspire, which you probably heard of last year. Um, and it stands for Attaining Success and Purpose Through Intentional Rigorous Education. And the goal of that is we're tasked with increasing the district A through G rate. Okay, so, but with that, we also support the district school site and with the MTSS interventions and system. And you're gonna see the whole purpose of our program is to get all stakeholders, whether it be staff, students, and parents, to look at A through G differently. Uh, not just A through Gs for college going. And in the past, if you, these are the A through G courses, well, I'm not gonna go to a four-year college, I don't need A through G. So with the Aspire team, what we're doing is we're trying to rebrand that, we're taking a different approach to that, okay? Um, so part of that comes with building partnership with parents, teachers, and counselors, and administrators. And again, our whole goal is basically we're interpreting and identifying A through G data. We do a lot with data, as you, we're going to show you in a minute, and uh, provide training and interventions and support from that data. So here's our data. Um, previously, you've seen the data for A through G that comes directly from CalPADS. This is our A through G data that's reported from our district and basically from our team. Um, so this is, these, these are our data 
That's last year's graduating class for the comprehensive high school. And last year, we only had three high schools. So if you look at HHS, A through G, that's Heritage. Um, their final A through G number, those number of students that met the A through G requirements are 285 out of seven, uh, 575 students. And that gives it a 49.57%. And for Paloma Valley High School A through G, um, the, the final number is 425, and that's out of 752. They had a large graduating class, and that amounts to 56.52%. Our Paris High um, A through G rates is 134. Out of their lowest, they have the lowest graduating class. Um, that's because their numbers are shrinking, and they're going to other school sites also, uh, 400. And that amounts to 33.5%. So that brings together our district A through G numbers. It's 844 out of 1,727. And that gives us a 48.87%. Now, um, you're going to see in the next slide, basically, that um, Chris is going to go over. It talks about uh, the trends and all that stuff. But what we did was, because we kind of reached our goal in four years, we had to reset our new goals. And that's why you see that basically our new goals for the class of 2026 will be 54%. Now, earlier when we started this program, we wanted a gradual increase. So that way we can sustain it, we can build upon that also. Now, these data comes from data we pull from IC, but we did a lot of transcript analysis to come up with these data. And that's why you see that picture right there is scrubbing bubbles, because we go through and we scrub data. And we find that there was a lot of things we need to clean up from the IC data. Uh, class that need to be repeated need to be marked repeat, because otherwise the student's GPA would be way off. And it does affect their graduation requirement. It does affect their Cal Grant. So and that's how we come up with those all numbers. And again, that's how we had to come up with our new goal of 54%. And I'm gonna pass it over to Chris. He's gonna talk about the trends and, and how we got there. Thank you, Betty. Thank you all. So I get to talk about the fun stuff, how we did it, right? <laughs> There's a lot of data, a lot of numbers. Um, but basically what Betty was covering is that we showed a, about a 10% increase from the year prior to uh, the graduating class of 2023, which is tremendous. As you can see the trends up there, um, we've never been this high as a district. We've never been higher than 40%. And as you see, usually with A through G, we see gradual increases and we were able to go up a whole 8% in one year, or sorry, um, almost 10% in one year. So that was huge. Um, and how we did that is, is, as Betty mentioned, we're obviously looking at the data, but trying to take that data to be intentional with it. What are we going to do with it? Um, as you all have heard from Ms. Cahoon, from Betty, typically A through G is something that we associate with college four-year four university-bound students. Um, however, in our district, most of our courses are actually written in UC doorways and are A through G courses. So this idea of only certain students being A through G um, most of our students are actually in A through G courses and they just don't make that connection. So we've taken that data and taken the knowledge that if a student is passing their courses with C or above, you know, they're going to be ready for the future, right? They're going to be doing well on AP exams. They're going to be doing well on SBAC. They're going to be doing well in so many areas that they need to be prepared for their future. And so as you can see, what we decided to do is we took the data and we started doing different activities. We did um, incentive drives for our students. So you're going to see here kind of the, all the fun stuff that we've been able to do. Um, incentives for our students that are close to meeting A through G, trying to do workshops with them to promote why they should try to meet their A through G requirements. Um, we created statuses, so if a student is on track, they are now known as platinum status, and so we celebrate that with them. And we'll show you a little clip shortly what that looks like. Um, we've done for our seniors that complete the A through Gs, we did an in and out truck, we did um, yard signs, we do certificates every six weeks for our students. Uh, parent workshops, 
clips on different topics. And really our goal is to change the culture, right? So we, we want all of the, the community, our stakeholders, the counselors to, to understand that to be A through G on track doesn't just mean that you're going to four year. It means that you're going to be prepared for, for whatever path you want to go down after high school. So that's really been our mission. And I feel um, as, you know, going back quickly, like the numbers are saying, you know, we're doing it and we're doing it together. It's not just the work of our team, but, you know, working with the counselors, we've been able to have trainings. Thank you to Ms. Cahoon. You know, she was allowed, allowed the counselors to be pulled for days for transcript analysis where we talked about validation techniques, talked about creative scheduling so that validation tools could be used. Um, we went with administrators, shared their A through G numbers, shared specific courses that they could focus on, where if they could get the group of kids in, their percentages would bump up. Um, all of that is possible through the data. And again, it's just our, us finding ways to connect how we're meeting the staff, but also the family. So up there is just a small glimpse of everything we're able to do. Um, I'm not sure if someone can click, whoever can click the, the link, but you know, just last year when we were here, um, this was just starting. We hadn't done a lot, and now the community is bought in. So here's a, a video of one of our parents who we just ran into at a back to school night. Um, I think that you have to click on the audio on the vid where the video is in the bottom right of it. And she's going to kind of talk a little bit about what it meant to her. Hi, Shanika Conley, my daughter. <laughs> uh, if you scroll up. My daughter attends Coloma Valley High School. She is a sophomore. And we received our email saying that she is Aspire Platinum status. Yay! Yay! Congratulations. So, this, this is such an honor. She is so happy. And, you know, to see our community members know what Aspire is and bought in, that's really what the goal of our program and what it's been about. And, if, and one thing that's really important, if you caught that, her daughter's a sophomore. You know, to have sophomores that pumped up about A through G, that's really where we're going to make the change. So if we were able to get those percentages early on, we really hope that moving forward it continues to grow. So, um, you know, we just wanted to share that clip. Uh, going back to the presentation, the last slide that we want to share is that we did get a chance to go to the College Board Forum in New York. Thanks to all of you. Um, and we were able to present on everything we've done. So what I just talked about in this brief couple minutes, we actually had a whole hour to dive deep in. And we were able to share everything we've done, the data that we use, how we use the data, all our spreadsheets. Um, and it was just great to see how ahead our district is. And really, it's because of the cabinet, the board, everyone being in support of our mission. And you know, we had so many schools just asking, like, how did you do that? Where did you guys come up with this? Or how can I utilize this in my district? Oh, we're, we don't even have that part yet. So to be able to see that was phenomenal. So, you know, that's a big thank you to all of you. And again, of course, also just being able to go out to the conference and learn what the up-to-date um, standards are from the College Board with AP, but also learning to collaborate with other, other districts, other people across the country to hear about what they're doing and so that we could bring that back and influence our program. Um, so just wanted to thank all of you for that as well. And now I'm going to hand it back over to Ms. Cahoon. Thank you, and I appreciate your patience. I know there's a lot of information, and you're drinking from a fire hose at a quarter to eight at night when there's thunderstorms. Um, so the final piece that um, we're going to go over are, is the kickoff to college um, event that took place uh, just before October PD days. And really, this is what it's all about. This is why we do all the other stuff. This is why we want kids to score well, is so that they can get to a point in their high school careers where they can choose what direction they want to go and start to explore what careers or college opportunities are out there for them for that next chapter after high school. So this is an opportunity for them to understand what they need to have in terms of a, an awareness piece for readiness, um, helping them plan what it's going to look like. We're working with all of our grade levels on this um, endeavor. Um, they get support starting their um, college applications out, support um, with you know financial aid, scholarships, and really just giving them tools and resources because there are so many resources and tools out there that even, you know, five or ten years ago we just weren't there for students. Um, this was the flyer that was shared with, um, uh, you know, through social media and through emails and so forth, just introducing all of the um, 
uh, information that we, or all of the information that was available to students um, in terms of PSAT testing and just getting that awareness out there. Uh, the student, this is the student attendance from that day. Um, we see that, you know, our fifth graders are awesome, 100% attendance. They're very excited. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, we had a pretty decent turnout, uh, you know, all things considered, the time of year. Uh, this is a look at our PSAT results from last year. So last year's um, presentation, you got the number of students that completed, and this is the actual, the actual test results. So last year, we had 937 students that completed the PSAT, with 44% of them meeting or exceeding the benchmark. And um, with math, we had around 11% um, that, I'm sorry, 18%, 15% that did so did um, meet and exceed, and then we had those that were approaching. Um, in terms of both meeting or exceeding, we had 12% of our students that did so. And you're probably asking yourself, why are we doing this PSAT thing when in the state of California for Cal State's and UCs, they don't use the SAT? Well, there's a good rationale for it. Um, not all our students are going to a Cal State or UC. In fact, there are so many universities across this country that our students have a really good opportunity, probably better than our local schools, of not only getting into, but getting an exorbitant amount of financial aid um, support, that we want to give them that opportunity. And most of those schools across the Midwest and the East Coast do require either that a student takes their SAT or their ACT. Um, and the reason behind taking the PSAT is just taking the test in and of itself um, has shown to have up to a 40 point increase on when they go to take their SAT exam. And part of it is that they know what to expect. It's not a surprise, right? We all do better when we have a test that we know what we're going to be tested on. Um, and then they know which areas that they need to kind of work on too as they approach that test. Um, what we see is that PSAT results are very much reflective of what we see in our CAS results. Um, with our students. And then finally, these are the student reflections. There's a Google survey that goes out, the, uh, um, out at the end so that we're able to solicit information and know how to plan this for the following year. Um, the biggest piece that you'll see here um, is that they really liked the, um, the college and career exploration activities, just this opportunity to explore what's out there. It isn't like when I was in high school, you were either a doctor, a lawyer, or a teacher. Uh, an engineer. There's so many more options available to students now, and it gives them an opportunity to understand what those options are that are available to them. I don't think I ever would have thought in my life of going up to my parents and saying, I'm going to be a YouTuber. Um, but that is a real thing, and they, you know, kids are going to school and they're getting degrees in social media um, advertising and so forth. Um, the next piece are our college applications, which they did begin, and these are the applications that they just started. They have not com not necessarily completed yet. Um, if you've been around any uh, seniors, you'll know that that date is coming up on November 30th because next week they're all going to be scrambling and stressed out trying to get last-minute letters of recommendation. Uh, and... Uh, community colleges as well. Like I said, we don't have the FAFSA information just yet because we were not able to open that platform. Um, once they get the new FAFSA rolling, that'll be a component that we're able to start. And then this just kind of shows you, um, we had our wonderful college and career fair. Uh, thank you to Ms. Beth Hayden, my secretary, for really helping to orchestrate this. One of the best things about this is that we have a wide representation for students. So we have local colleges, we have colleges from all over the state, um, we had colleges from as far as Alaska come in, um, all over the country. Yeah, Alaska. Uh, yeah, we told them to pack warm. Um, we had over 400 students and community, community members show up, and there was conversations. There, it was a hustle. It was a bustle. It was an exciting time to see kids asking questions and parents asking questions. Um, we also had representation from local um, u unions, um, off, you know, going over jobs that do offer competitive wages that we need to keep our society going. So it was a really just an exciting opportunity, and it really met the diverse needs of all of our students. With that being said, I could talk about it forever, but I really believe that a picture is worth a thousand words, and so this evening we're going to end you with a short clip of our college and career and our um, college and career fair evening. There is sound.
while they're working that out, I'm going to um, jump in for just a moment. I would rather thank you, Dr. Director. Actually, she just defended her dissertation, so we can round of applause for her. Um, <laughs> and I went to Director uh, Kahoon and her team, because what you received, Dave, even though it was a lot of information, you've now covered, we presented to you El Capital too, with all students to graduate college and career ready. Um, so what that does is later you don't have to hear a night of all five or four, now there's been a little additional one, but four El Cap goals. So while this is a lot to take in, we are trying to cover an El Cap goal per uh, meeting so that you don't have to do that marathon marathon at the end. So I know this is a lot, not a lot. Are there any questions while they're working on that? Oh, yeah. I, <laughs> I saw writing, so... <laughs> She's brand new, okay. and she's not going to want to say we haven't done a good job with that. And it's one of the reasons we hired the lady before. I can tell you the plan. Is she has a plan, <laughs> and I didn't want her to have to fumble because it's hard to speak to what was done. Honestly, it, it's been a, an area of weakness, and we searched and searched for a person with great fluency and talent on how to correct these things, and that person is before you. But she's not going to say that about herself. Um, so I have to step in and say it for you. I'm going to answer really quick, and then we'll go to the it's video. An area we need to grow in. Yes. So I am from probably my first week here. Um, I have been spending time reaching out to all of our feeder districts, and I've been able to connect with every single one of those districts. So I, I've met in person with some. I've talked on the phone with others, um, and. Uh, having those conversations. One is um, getting the data. Um, so my goal is to get the data by June 30th. And in terms of data, that's our Algebra 1 grades, our Spanish 1 grades, our LPAC, our RFEP, our 504, our IEPs. There's probably one that I'm forgetting in the list that's typed out in my office. Um, but trying to get all that data by June 30th so that all of our ninth graders are, are CASP, accurately placed in their classes when they start their fresh, their ninth grade year. Um, be, and I know first and foremost from my own kids, changing their schedules can be traumatizing for them. I know my daughter had it happen every year. So my goal is to make sure that we try to get as many of our kids accurately placed in the right classes. And so in terms of math, part of that is not just looking at our grades, but also looking at their CASP. There is no shame in taking Algebra one in eighth grade and retaking Algebra one in ninth grade. I, I held my own kid back on that. Even, I mean, right, and we need foundational skills. They can make it up when they go to college. Obviously, we want to accelerate those that are able to accelerate, but we don't want kids feeling so defeated that they feel like they can't overcome. So we want to make sure that we're placing the kids in the class that they're ready to be placed in. Um, I'm working on getting a meeting with all of the districts together, sitting down and starting to meet maybe quarterly <laughs> and having those conversations, and then also going to our middle school feeders, having our sites go in and having those vertical articulation um, conversations with our, with our algebra classes um, and then with our Spanish and English. It's starting to build that relationship that I don't think was here before. So I had a really great meeting and conversation with Dr. Wise over in Romoland. I've been working with Menifee. Um, I'm working right now with um, Paris Elementary and, in, and in with New View. So, um, and they're all very excited because they're giving us their, our students. So we're having conversations. What math curriculum are you adopting so that there's an alignment? One of the exciting things is that um, students coming to us from Romoland will actually be able to start in an AP Spanish class or in a Spanish 3 class because they have pulled, um, they're taking their Spanish early in middle school and they're actually taking AP Spanish language in middle school, which is a huge relief on us because if you've ever done a master schedule, um, Spanish 1 is always an impacted class. It's very difficult to, to kind of manage because everybody takes that class. So uh, that is my plan is to meet um, ideally at some point, an MOU will come across your your 
your table to sign that will be a multi-district, multi-year agreement. That might be a little bit out, but at the very least right now, they're sending me Google files with that data. And actually our Aspire team has been sifting through that data to make sure that we're <laughs> tagging everything accurately for our students and then making sure that our placements are accurate. Yes. And I think it's a huge mistake in education because <coughs> a sixth grade foundational math setting, they're pretty much done all the way through. And we're, we keep pushing them and pushing them. And so hopefully that those feeder schools, at least that we can look into that to see what, what they're doing to the kids. Because if a kid's struggling in six, we move them on to seventh, they're going to struggle in seventh, probably even more. And then you're going to put them in eleventh and eighth grade and they're going to really struggle. Now the good news is at least you have the mentality of the fourth grade to say, hey, it's okay. Slow down. You're okay. As long as you can get through this, and it maybe they sit one time in ninth grade, doesn't work out. They succeed in tenth grade, pass it. Then once things start to click, then they can go to geometry, obviously, and then they'll actually leave and get the four-year middle school and college ready. So that's extremely important. But before we get off to the rest, we'll yeah, let's let's the next watch the video. song will be in your head all night by the way <laughs> more questions We only test in 11th grade for high school, and then for for middle school, it's 7th and 8th, or 8th grade, sorry, 7th and 8th grade. But high school is just 11th grade. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Um, do we know where the breakdown is? Is it in algebra? Is it in so when the students get the reports, and we are able to disaggregate that, we just haven't gotten that information yet. We are able to go in, and we're able to see, is it in geometric functions? It's, it's a broad scope, and we're, we're able to see that information. Traditionally, we, Mr. Campos, Algebra 1's been the biggest, has the highest failure rate of any other math class. Yeah, and, and that's what I kind of, um, I kind of figured, just the way that we've, we've moved towards push, you know, with math, and, and you know Child Left Behind was disastrous, and we're kind of reaping the consequences of that. I don't necessarily think Common Core was the greatest, you know, math now it's all wordy, and, and I know when I see my middle schoolers come up to me and give me some trouble, I'm like, whoa, it's a completely different mindset, and, and, and it's, it's very, I don't know if it's a computation thing and it's the wordiness. Um, but those are just my concerns. Obviously, math for me, I think math is all around us. And I think, you know, the, if you want a decent job, you got to have basic math. So lots of the literacy skills, don't get me wrong. Reading is important and writing. But at the same time, you know, in today's job world, you got to have the mathematical skills. And I'm just sorry. It seems like we're on the right path to get that and, and to switch towards that because I think that's extremely important in those scores. There is a correlation between the literacy piece and between mathematics. Um, one of the things that people tend to take for granted is, um, the, or don't do, is reading a math book. 
And I'll be very honest with you, um, even in, you know, I was in advanced classes. When I got to college, I started reading my math books, and I was like, oh, my gosh, why didn't I have a math teacher tell me this when I was in high school? And Right? It doesn't sound so simple, but part of that literacy component is teaching kids how to navigate through those textbooks and reading and understanding the information that's there and then having those communications. So there's, there's shifts that we have to make. Um, and I'll be very, very honest, when I was a high school principal, my number one focus, and I was an English teacher in high school for 12 years, was math. That was my number one focus when I got to West Valley High School was mathematics. And unfortunately, all the progress that was made, COVID kind of derailed that, but um, I still check back because I know they're still doing some stuff and they've see, I, they're, they're seeing increases. So there are ways that we can go about this. Um, but people are feeling defeated. And so math, a lot of it is mind over matter too. It's a confidence piece. If you go in feeling that you can do it, you'll be much more successful than the, the, the mindset, unfortunately, around math is it's hard and it's boring. And so we got to shift the mindset collectively in the district. And it starts with getting kids excited when they're in middle school about coming to high school and taking these courses. But it's also going to start in those conversations that we're having at the sites with our leadership teams, with our, with our, our teachers. We have some really great math teachers in the district. And it's taking what they have and sharing that information and capitalizing off of those best practices. Because when, the, when there's success in the classroom, not only are the kids performing better, but our teachers are happier and they wanna be here. And it kind of, it's a, it's a cycle, right? When they see that success, your teachers, when you go and you have that really awesome lesson plan, you feel that, right? You're pumped up. It's like you just won the Super Bowl. And for me it is, I'm a nerd though. So, you know, for me it's winning the Super Bowl. We are going into textbook adoption next year, so that's going to be a big piece. While curriculum doesn't cure anything, we are primed um, in terms of starting to have those collaborative conversations around what are we doing and what are we going to get that's going to help us improve in our math scores. So we went to the, the College Board Forum. So the College Board holds, they hold several different um, conferences throughout the year, but the forum is their grand master. So it's the one where it's kind of com comprehensive of everything. And so they have just different presenters from across the nation on various topics. Um, so that it was in Manhattan, so we were able to stay in Manhattan. Um, you know, we had tons of people coming up to us from all over Florida, um, gosh, where else? Like we it, all over Mississippi. So it was just it was really interesting. We actually from other countries. Like yeah, we also had from other countries that were there, and they visited. They were part of college board. Yeah, but it's a national college board conference. Yeah, and so they they get to share all of the mass updates that they have with AP, what's going on with AP program, SAT with testing, and so that's kind of like the bread and butter of the college board. Yeah, of course. Oh, 100%. I think um, even, I, you know, if we could have just at least one person attend, like, it, I think it's totally worth it, just the knowledge that we gained. I think one of the most impactful sessions that we had, and we're trying to find a way to disseminate that info to the, to the counselors when we have our next counseling meeting, is we actually got to sit on a, it was like a panel of lobbyists, but they were lobbyists for higher ed. And so they talked about how what's going on politically in our current day society, how it's impacting higher ed, K through 12, and so it was fascinating, fascinating things that were coming down the pipeline that, you know, we might not even be privy to any time soon, that they're already kind of seeing 
what's going to be um, unfolding in the next few years. So extremely important conference. I thought it was great to, to go. And so we're trying to, as a team, that's one of the things we talked about as well is, you know, going to the conference is one thing, but how can we bring some of that back? So we're finding a way to put together a little presentation for our peers so that they can get some of that information as well. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Are there any other questions? No, um, I just want to say that I think it's uh, a good idea to have um, middle schoolers take the AP Spanish class at that time because then it gives them an opportunity to take another extra class when they go to their high school stage. So I think that's a very good idea. I think we should really do it because uh, I was talking to an assistant soup for the Romaland district and this woman was telling me about the importance um, of it as well that other a lot of other districts that are that are doing it it has become um, a really great um, way for students to ha just have more classes because I, I know even when I was in high school I couldn't couldn't really do all the extra classes that I personally wanted to and that helps kids create uh, more the feeling of having a choice and then more confident within themselves so I think we should definitely do that thank you, thank you. any other questions All right, thank you. Have a wonderful evening and a happy Thanksgiving. Okay, we're gonna move on now to written reports, 13.1, discipline, October 2023 monthly suspension report. Now we move to action items, 14.1, general functions. This is an agreement with Orbach and Huff and Henderson LLP for legal services funded through the general fund in the amount of 50 to 345 per hour. Do I have a motion? I'll do my motion. I got it. Second. This is for the, yes. You know what this is for, right? Yeah. Okay. He made the motion. the motion, I'll, I'll oh, second. Motion? Yeah. Okay. Dave second, okay. All right, let me wake up again, guys. I kind of. Um, okay, if there's any questions, concerns, if not, you can vote electronically. Fourteen point one passes five in favor with none opposed. We're going now to fourteen point two personnel. Certificated personnel action items. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Trustee Vallejo, Trustee Garcia. Any questions, concerns? If not, you can vote electronically. Fourteen point two is five in favor with zero opposed. Fourteen point three is personnel. Classified personnel action items. Do I have a motion? Okay. Trustee Garcia, Trustee Campos. Any questions, concerns? If not, you can vote electronically. We have five in favor, 14.2. Three, five in favor, zero opposed. 14.4 is sal salary equity adjustment for director of security to director for security. Do I have a motion? Second. Second. Trustee Garcia, Trustee Nellison. Questions, concerns? If not, you can vote electronically. Fourteen point four passes five in favor with zero opposed. Fourteen point five personnel salary equity adjustment for confidential employees. Do I have a motion? So moved. Trustee Nellison, Trustee Garcia. Any questions, concerns? If none, please vote electronically. Fourteen point five passes five in favor, zero opposed. 
14.6 is personnel, memorandum of understanding between the Paris Union High School District and the California School Employees Association and its chapter, Paris Valley 469, regarding the new job description of work-based learning specialists and authorization to recruit. Any questions, concerns? Do we need a motion? I'm sorry. So moved. Trustee Nellison. Second. Trustee Vallejo. Was there any? Okay, I think we're going to have some information presented on this. Um, any, any questions, concerns? I mean, we, I, we, I think it'd be a good idea just. Well, we, we've looked it over, so it's, I don't have any questions. So okay. I can only speak for me, so. Um, okay, so let's, uh, we have a motion, Trustee Nelson. Right. Okay, now. Uh, you can vote electronically. It's, yeah, it's, it's not there. It's on my screen, yeah. You can still read it out. Okay. 14.6, um, does not pass. Three opposed, two in favor. Go to our next. Next is 14.7 buildings and grounds. Resolution number 0923 24, resolution of the Board of Trustees of the Paris Union High School District relating to information made available to the public in the form of statutory school facility facility fees, including alternative school facility fees, reportable fees, report for fiscal year 2023-2024, reportable fees report, and findings there, thereon in compliance with government code sections 66006 and 66001, no fiscal impact. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Trustee Nellison, Trustee Garcia. You can, uh, any questions, concerns? If not, you can vote electronically. Fourteen seven passes, five in favor with zero opposed. 14.8 is business authorization for purchase of capital equipment above $10,000. November 2023. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Trustee Nellison, Trustee Garcia. Any questions, concerns? Can I make just a comment? Uh, Trustee Garcia, you had mentioned, I think it was at the last person, I'm sorry, two meetings that you were about the threshold here. So I just wanted to remind everybody um, that the $10,000 and the $50,000 threshold here on action, the lower threshold, all the way down to zero, are on the to make, make sure that was clear. Okay. Okay. Um, you could vote electronically. Fourteen point eight passes. Five in favor with zero opposed. So Fourteen point nine is business authorization for purchase orders above fifty thousand for November twenty twenty three. Do I have a motion? Some. Trustee Garcia. Second. Trustee Nelson. Any questions or concerns? I, I I think I. Well, I had a question, but I had it answered by Grant. It was just about a, um, some equipment we bought and. I was okay. I just wanted to know 
where we got it. Okay. So we're 14.9. You can, any questions, concerns? You can vote electronically. 14.9. No, wait a minute. 14.9 passes five in favor with zero posts. 15.1 is business revolving cash report for October 2023. It's an information item. Next is 16.1, closed session if necessary. Not necessary this evening, Mr. Stafford. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bennett. 17.1 is reconvening the public service, well, so we don't need that. Other items by the superintendent, 18.1. Not, nothing else this evening. Okay. Other items by the, 19.1 is other items by the Board of Trustees. Trustee Nellison. Nothing else, thank you. Okay, Trustee Campos. Nope. Trustee Garcia. Yes, thank you, you guys, for the T-shirt. Appreciate everything. That'll be all. Okay. Trustee Vallejo. No, I'm good, thank you. Okay. And myself, Trustee Stafford. Yes, thank you for the T-shirts. I don't know if it's anyone here from Pathways uh, still here, or I didn't see no anyone. But nice color, beautiful shirt. Uh, I'd also like to thank uh, Mr. Bennett, the district, and the board for the the nice plaque for my service. I'd just like to say thank you for letting me serve. I appreciate it, and um, it's it's a pleasure to serve. Okay, so. We'll go now to 20.1, which is adjournment of the regular board meeting of the Board of Trustees for November 15th, 2023. Do I have a motion? Did Steve? Okay. And Dave? Okay. Okay. Uh, any questions, concerns? <laughs> if not, you can vote electronically. 20.1 is five in favor with zero opposed. This meeting is adjourned at 8.18 p.m.